Most people in America are quite familiar with what is and is not their lawful rights. What's amazing to me is how many people in a community will deny other people's rights to allow their own version of their rights to do what they think is sore. You don't soar if you're stealing from some other person's life. You do not win if you're sexually assaulting someone to do something in sin. And openly, when I talk about faith, people want to roll their eyes and they really want to run away from the rebuke of the Lord. What I have seen with children of godless homes is that they talk about that they are somehow using Jesus in their life and that they say they're a person of faith, they say they're a person of spirituality. But when they run into someone like me who is truly profoundly interested in God, they really do not want to stay. They understand that God is speaking to them in those moments, but their whole body wants to move away because they are facing themselves before Christ. And they're not facing themselves to me. I don't profess to be Christ. I am not Jesus Christ. I am not He. But what I do know is that when I read someone, they are emotionally bound to that moment. And their emotional binding to that moment with Jesus is what caused them to fear the rebuke of the Lord. So we have gone far, far away from fearing God. And when we've gone so far away from fearing God, we lose ourselves in our attitudes and our emotions and our beliefs about what is and isn't God. And what we know from the good works around the world about God is that nobody truly knows God except the angels. And what I'm fascinated about as I continue to listen to the Lord about what I should and shouldn't do and what I should and shouldn't shout about is how few people today, so many arrogant people today, don't fear the Lord. Even people in the White House think they know God, and they don't know God. They might have the highest pope, they might have the highest deacons, they might have the highest, sharpest people in Catholicism who really know quite a lot about the history of our life and our, our heritage and all the things anthropologically, sociologically, psychologically that came about from the belief in the Lord. But here's the deal. If you have no personal faith with Jesus Christ or whatever you call your deity, to make it really real, you will not survive this coming world. You have to have a faith in something that allows you to fight back from sin. You have to be willing to win in your specific capabilities, not in the sin of stealing from people like me or other people living in poverty. You steal from people every day at the shelters. You steal from people in every way because you're just above that poverty line. But more importantly, you're in poverty of your mind. The poverty of your mind is what holds you back. And then you want to go on the attack. How stupid are you before God? If you can't even handle one reading before Halloween, All Hallows' Eve, when the release of the world occurs in terms of the spirits that come around during the holidays to help you celebrate, to help you learn, to help you grieve, to help you really earn, you are foolish. That this time of year from Halloween through to New Year's, is all filled with the Lord's Spirit. It's all filled with the world of light, but it can also be filled with dark and spite. Your spite for other people is what's harming your life. Your inability to hear someone say, stop following me. Stop interfering with my rights online. Stop abusing my videos. Stop playing with my things. Stop stealing my property, the very few things I have. Stop. When you have been told stop in person, and you've been told stop in private, and you've been told stop online, it means stop. But if you're using isolation to win something in your life with your new man or your new person, you're foolish. Isolation of other people when God has placed them on your life is the dumbest thing you could ever do. Because what you're saying is, I don't need you, God. I don't need you. But what you really need is that person God placed on your life. To not abuse you in any way. To say, look, you're going in the wrong way. You're going off track in your life. You are so far from God. I'm frightened for you in the afterlife. 